Right, so the case where the cards don't match seems to be working fine. Now we want to test the case where the cards do match, but it's hard to do it because we don't know where the matches are. So let's go back to Construct 2 and go up in the uh, event sheet to the event that I had you mark as one you could toggle off for testing purposes. What you do is if you toggle this disabled, let's go ahead and do that now, toggle it disabled, <coughs> then the cards actually won't be shuffled. So let's try running it. Now the cards are side by side and it does look like the cards are uh, being destroyed if they if they match and if they don't match they're being turned over. You notice that the cards are being turned over really quickly and it would be nice for the player to be able to see the card at least a little bit longer when the cards matched. So let's take the same wait two seconds and paste it up right before we destroy the cards. Now, the delay we have is pretty good, <coughs> but it could be the case where we need to fine tune that delay. And so having it, having this too hard coded in here in several places makes it much more difficult for us to do that. But instead, let's add a global variable called G card reset delay, and we'll set it equal to two. copy it. Then go to the event sheet one and find every place where we put in wait two seconds and let's put in the name of that global variable. Now we only have to change it in one place if we don't like that value. And let's go ahead and test it. It might be a little long but we'll leave it as it is for now. Well, there's a problem. If we click on a card that's turned over twice, it matches itself. So let's fix that. And the, where, the place we would fix it is here where we determine whether there are fewer than two cards turned over. We don't want to turn the card over if the card is already turned over. So let's add another condition that says that if the card <coughs> is not face up. So first we test to, to see that, that it is face up and then we invert that condition. So now we're checking to see if the cards picked is less than two and the card is not face up, then we can go ahead and turn the card face up. All right, let's go through that and we notice that if we uh, that we can have more than two cards up if they're in the middle of a test. We need to have a delay before we reinitialize our cards. So go back to uh, that wait, one of those wait actions and copy that. And then go down to where we initialize the cards right here and paste it in place and drag it up to the top. And now it works much better. It won't let us turn over cards until the cards that 
<coughs> first two cards have been turned back. Okay, we get to the end, and we've made matched all the cards, but then nothing happens. What we want to have happen is we want um, the game to start over. So we have to keep track of the matches and decide when we've matched all the cards, and then make the game restart. So the first thing we'll need to do that is a global variable. We'll call it G matches. And in it, we'll keep track of how many matches we found. Go back to the event sheet. And the place where we want to add to that is where, where we did this test to see whether the cards matched. Let's add an action there to add to G matches. All right, now we also need to do a test to see whether G matches is equal to the total number of pairs. And there's many places where we could do it. Let's just go ahead and add event outside of every, all the other events. And it'll be uh, compare G matches equal to, we'll say greater than or equal to. And uh, since there are twice as many cards as there are pairs, let's do G number cards divided by two. All right, what do we want to do when the cards we've reached, we've got all of our matches? We want to <clears throat> go back and restart this layout. So go to layout. And we only have one layout in the game, so go to layout one. You can see how useful it is to have the ability to turn the cards shuffling off. Now, notice how fast the cards the new, new game came up. Um, we need to put a little delay in that to slow it down so we have time to realize that the game actually ended before, uh, before we um, restart. So copy that delay and paste it in down here. And I have a feeling this isn't going to be long enough, so Let's actually, instead of using that global variable, let's create a new one specifically for the purpose of restarting our game. So we'll call it G Game Reset. Play. And let's set it equal to 8. Go back and change that card reset delay to Game Reset Delay. Let's see if it worked. Our delays are too long, so we'll have to go in and fix that. And this delay is pretty long too. But it does work. But that didn't work. You just see see how the game restarted again. So we've got to figure out how why that's happening. Um, let's just go up to the very top to the on start of layout event and add an action to reset all of our global variables. Make sure you move it up to the top. And that should take care of our problem. Alright, the cards come back and we try again and we'll know what it worked.
All right, our game is basically working. So uh, we'll wrap up this lesson. And in the next lesson, we'll add the finishing touches to the game. See you then.